This is the 6KWPBBR and it is for the Rectron branded UPSs. This is the connecting cable from the battery to the UPS. You can see that it is uh, very thick. This uh, probably is 50 amp. And there's the earth connection from chassis to chassis. And I'll demonstrate how to set that up. These are probably the feet. Okay, if you're going to rack mount it, I'm sure these are the rack mounts. Okay, if you're going to do the rack mount, well, there's the mounting brackets and then it comes with the four screws. There's the screws in the packet. I'm not going to be doing the rack mount, but I'm just showing you there the uh, mounting brackets. There's two of them. Uh, one thing you will notice is this is very heavy. This is heavier than a server. Now, it does come with these feet. There they are. Um, there's a mechanism that you've got to use here. You see there's a, a way to, to put it in. If you try and put them in like this, it won't work. You've got to do it like that. And if you want to extend it, well, it gives you the option. There we go. If you want to have maybe two banks next to each other. If you want to extend it, there you go. You can see it comes with these extra pieces which you can extend. And they slot in there. Maybe if you have two banks next to each other, I'm not sure. Right. So that's the feet which I'm going to use. Right, now here is the uh, connecting cable. You're going to want to open this. All right, there we go. It's in like a heat shrink pack. Now, first thing I'd advise is install the earth, the chassis connection, the earth. Uh, you can use a star or a size 8 hex. Right, there we go. And now on the other side, you want to install the chassis as well. Now, you, you have to open this little plastic cover here. I've opened it, there it says battery 192 volts, so you've got to make sure the battery you've got is 192 volts, it says there 192 volts, so we're matching it. Now first put the earth on, now you've got two options, you must make sure it's flat, And then I would plug in this side first. Uh, it can only go one way. There's the positive, there's the negative, but it only fits in one way. It only fits in one way. See, if I try and put, put, it, put it in the wrong way, it doesn't make uh, any contact. Right, so there we go. There's the battery connection. And on this side, you'll have to open it up. You'll start with battery connector one. Now, don't fool yourself, just because this is uh, batteries and DC, don't think that you won't get a shock. Anything over 48 volts is deadly. So, um, just be aware that even though that you're working with batteries, uh, and normally, you you know, batteries, you don't think you will get a shock, you will, you can really get a shock here. So, you're going to feed this one in. Also, only goes one way. There we go. So now what I've, you can do is you can just strap this if you want to. Then you will uh, close the circuit breaker. It's currently open. You could close it. I'm first going to turn these around. And then I will switch it on. Now you can daisy chain these. So that means there you'll go to another battery if you want to cascade these and put them in a daisy chain. Okay, so I'm briefly going to go through how to set this UPS up. What you want to do is press the up. Okay, while it's in, uh, it's, it's not on. It's not online. You can just uh, press and hold these two buttons together and then you'll get into the menu mode. There you can see it's flashing one. 
Uh, now we come to maximum charger current setting. Now this can be important because it can allow the uh, UPS to change the rate at which it charges the batteries. You can see that's the default current. Now this is where you've got to be careful because the default value, you see it says there 1 amp, but it should actually be maybe 4 amps. Okay, so there's 2 amps, then it goes to 4. Now if you've got the long running option, with, then you can have this on the 6 amp uh, high charging current. I'm going to leave it at 2 amps just so that the batteries can charge at a faster rate. This is very important, number 19. Now if you add an additional battery bank, like I've got one here, you'll have to adjust it here, telling the UPS uh, how many batteries you've got in terms of amp hours. So this is where you will make this adjustment. Right, now what I have here is a kettle, and I'm going to demonstrate the uh, capacity, the UPS online capacity or backup capacity, by switching on this kettle and showing you how the available hours or minutes changes based on the capacity of the batteries. All right, so I'm switching on the kettle. I'm now putting the UPS on. All right, and now if this was on the single capacity, which would be the default, so now I'm telling it there isn't a battery bank connected to it. See there, it just, say, it just says one bank of 9 amp hour batteries. Now I'm going to go out of this menu. Alright, so there we go. Switch it on. And now I'm going to switch on the kettle again. Okay, there it's gone into... Uh, it's gone into uh, battery mode there. It says 18 hours, but let's switch on the kettle. It's 47 minutes, or 50 minutes, there we go. See there it says 50 minutes. And if the battery bank is now connected, switch that off. There we go, and switch the UPS on, and lose the mains, okay, now add the load, you can see that with the load on, I've now put the kettle on, you can see it says there are two hours, So that is how I know it's calculating this accurately. I'm going to switch off the load. Uh, put the mains back on. Now there is a calibration for the backup time. If you find that there's a problem, um, you can calibrate that time available. So you can go down to 0.5 and up to 2. So what that's going to do is say it said you had 2 hours left. Well, if you set this to 0.5, it'll halve that to 1 hour left. Um, I'm not sure why they've got that unless maybe the batteries have lost some of their capacity and they, um, they've derated a bit then you could uh, adjust that for the end user.